one of the ladies has asked me about listening to recorded music. Listening to recorded music. The hujja being that uh, some of the fuqaha say that the recorded music is not actually music because it comes from a recording. It doesn't come from musicians. And <laughs> It's a good illustration of what we're talking about as shubhas. <laughs> However, what we can uh, this is an unreliable position because the the the, uh, the amount of uh, uh, revenue generated by recorded music in the United States in the year 2002 was around 12 billion dollars, and the amount by live musicians was about 1.7 billion dollars. And so it's obviously they're not, you know, they're not buying it because it's not music. And there are six Sahih hadiths, two of them express, uh, that expressly uh, forbid musical instruments. And so they, those of taqwa and iman, the ruling is clear. The ruling is clear that the primary basis for musical instruments is that they're haram. For music, is that the instrumental music is that it's haram. This is clear from the hadith, and there are, these hadiths are sahih. There's no doubt that the Prophet actually said them, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he said it for our benefit. And many of us who are sadhaqin know that how difficult it is to get these old tunes from the bad old days out of our heads, and so that the Quran, Quran uplifts, or the dhikr has an effect, etc., etc. You want to poison your ruh, listen to music. So this is clear, and the fuqaha have only made exceptions for some forms of music because of local, uh, because of local uh, has local needs. For example, the Ottomans noticed that there was nothing quite like a martial band that could raise the hymn of the soldiers for cutting off the heads of the kafirs when they were going into battle in jihad, and so some of their muftis permitted it for that. They permitted it for that. This is a local and. What is music, after all? When we reflect upon the nature of music, it's the pure, uh, unadulterated essence and expression of the nefs, of the musician's nefs. And so, why let it into your nefs? <laughs> it's the, it, you know, this, it, the, the corruptive influence of it has been noticed by, uh, the, when it is inappropriate, been noticed by Plato, has been noticed by many of the greatest thinkers. And so the, the idea that you can take, you know, well, they played the, fru the flute in Hadramaut, you know, in some of the, in Rafa, he said that, that it was okay. So it doesn't, uh, these, the, every place where the fuqaha went against the outward content of these hadiths that are sahih from the Prophet them, they did it within tightly culturally circumscribed bounds, where they didn't find a, deleterious effect on the rule. They used it to make dhikr, they used it for a hadra, they used it for this, they used it for that. During, with strictly culturally circumscribed bounds. And it was aib, it was wrong, and it was disgraceful to use it outside of those bounds. And to take these fetwas, the fetwa shoppers of our time, and say, oh, it's off in this book, it's off in this Maliki book, it said, and under this condition, and this Shafi book, it said, under this condition, the Salaf al did it, and this, this book of fetwas from Hadramaut, whatever it may be. It's divorcing it from its content, and it's dishonest. Because our culture is not this culture. You know, you say, well, I'm listening to this, you know, because it's uh, it's re religious music or something, or there's a fetwa about this, you know, that, you know, they can... Well, what's to stop your little sister from listening to Mick Jagger? You're going to look like a complete hypocrite. And so the line, the best line is the line where the Sunnah drew the line, which is that the musical instruments are out and unaccompanied vocal music is in. It's permissible. The Qasidas, the, these sorts of things. You know. There is a fatwa from Hodaida from approximately 1907, it was given by the Mufti of Hodaida that said that the, the a sanduk, which he termed it, in other words, a crank up Edison gramophone is not music. It's not music. And if you listen to a crank up Edison gramophone, he says, because it doesn't cause tarab, 
It doesn't cause uh, the effect of music, the, the emotional excitement of music, the, the, the effect on the soul of music, of it revs up the naps, which is termed in Arabic tarot. It doesn't happen from this box, the Mufti said. He says, rather, the only thing that it causes is astonishment. <laughs> People of Iman and Taqwa, times have changed. What comes out of the box today is exactly what comes out of off the instruments, or better. And so the ruling has changed. However, the reason I'm mentioning all of this is that when one hears recorded music, and when you know, there's no way to, it's not under one's control, wherever it may be. One does not, because of this fatwa, even though it's a weak fatwa that exists, that the Mufti from Khodaida didn't see the, the, the industries that exist today and didn't, didn't know the reality in 1907, you know, look at the you know, wax cylinders, they didn't give us what we have today. Because this fatwa exists, we are not obliged to condemn recorded music when we walk past it or when someone is using it because of the difference of the fuqaha about the matter. So this is where it should be used, not for ruining your own ruh by playing something that lets someone else's nafs directly impinge on your own. You know, but rather, when, uh, because as you know, when something reprehensible that is agreed upon by all of the fuqaha exists, you have to try to change it. And it's the same reason, it's the same, uh, it, it's, it, it's an analogous in every particular to the ruling on smoking. Everybody at Taqwa and Iman, they, they know that smoking causes at least 24 diseases, emphysema, cancer, uh, hardening of the arteries, gum diseases, etc., etc., etc. And we know what the ruling is. It's haram. However, a fatwa exists among some of the folk, Abul Ghani and Nabulsi, for example, before the medical facts were established. It's an unreliable fatwa. You can't rely on it and go out and buy a pack and light up with it. You know, Allah won't accept it from you. However, it saves us from the obligation of having to condemn our, a fellow Muslim when we see him smoking. Otherwise, it would be obligatory to say something to him every time. And it's not obligatory to say something. And alhamdulillah, otherwise the business would be very long. And the same way with uh, recorded music. So if someone hears recorded music and it's not through their own bringing it about, you know, it's not obligatory to condemn it. However, it's noticeable. If you want to advise someone, tell them the ruh will be taban and the Quran will no longer uplift as it should. Everybody who knows what music does knows the effect of it. And the people who think that it's just, you know, it's, it's you know, halal for me to listen to uh, records and uh, go to jazz concerts. With it. These are people who are blind. And the fuqaha who give it out as a fatwa are blind. Because part of fatwa consists in tazkiyah to nafs. The interest could aflaha min zakaha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us what, the sh- what is the sharia doing in our lives. Could aflaha min zakaha. He has truly succeeded who purifies it. This is a fatwa interest. It's not just to let people do anything they want of the interests of fatwa that are, is often lost sight of in our times by the, by the muftis who don't, don't have any clue about it and don't know about it, is tazkiyat and nafs, what will be the effect on the soul of the person you're giving the fatwa to? How will, what will happen to his deen if you give him this fatwa? This is an interest. This is a sharia countenance interest that the fatwa, the person giving the fatwa must be conscious of and must be observing. Otherwise he's not a mufti. And how many people giving fatwas are not muftis in our times? Even if they've memorized all the books of all the methods and if they're the Imam al-Asr or whoever else, if they, give a, if they give a fatwa that the music is okay, they don't understand the effect of music on the nafs. And they don't, effect, they don't under, they understand the effect of American popular music on the nafs, bil khusus. And so their fatwa is like their lack of a fatwa. Alhamdulillah wa shukri alayhi so it's not obligatory to comment on it if you see someone doing it. However, if you you know if you see somebody that you love, give, tell them to give themselves a break and tell them that there are the, these six hadiths exist from the Prophet sallallahu and they're sahih. And the line that is drawn that is clearly dem, uh, clearly demarcated in the in the, the Sunnah from the Prophet sallallahu 
is between uh, voices accompanied by musical instruments or musical instruments by alone, the ma'azif, which are forbidden by name, which means musical instruments and it doesn't mean anything else. And on the other hand, the unaccompanied human voice. And there were even professional singers with unaccompanied human voice in the time of Medina, in the time of the Prophet them, and the Prophet let them be. So the qasidas and so forth, the unaccompanied human voice, they're permissible. As for muftis in particular geographic areas where they, where they found their experience that it didn't corrupt the nafs and, it didn't, uh, and, and where it was carefully circumscribed by cultural bounds. And so we find it in some Maliki books from Morocco. These are, it's not something you can generalize to and say, well, you know, you know it says music and Jim Morrison and Doris are music, whatever it may be. You know, this doesn't, uh, it's, you know, it's, dis- it's dishonest. It's dishonest to take something out of context and uh, apply it as a global thing. Petwa shopping is a dishonesty, and those who do it are dishonest. And that's the law and all. Alhamdulillah.